Mrs. Burton, I want to thank you very much for meeting with me today. Uh, as you know, we're taping this interview, and then we'll replay it later for people to get to know you better. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I'd like very much to uh, find out more about you, what your situation is, and mostly how you feel about your situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wonder if you could just start by telling us a bit about yourself, what your life's like, what you're, what you're doing, OK? Well, I'm tried anyway, but um, my life seems to have been a kind of a hardship life in a way of speaking or an experienced life because my mother become paralyzed when I was in my early days. How, uh, and when you were 1927, year of 1927. Oh, yes. And uh, I had her to take care of, uh -huh. see. How old were you at that time, oh, roughly? Roughly, I don't know, 27. I was born in 1904. Uh-huh. Yeah, 27, what, about 23 then? Mm -hmm. Something like that, because uh -huh. I was born in 20. And uh, so uh, I, I started out then to take care of her, just she and I, and uh, my father, I didn't know he wasn't with us. So uh, when she had this stroke, she had a little job cleaning offices up, oh. and I went right on that job. I see. And that's the way I took care of her, from there to other work that I got a hold of. And then uh, she lived from 27 to 51. Did she? Partially paralyzed. He took good care of her. And then, well, that's what one time the doctor said, that she had been taken care of good the reason she lasted like she did. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so she, uh, then later on, I did marry. Oh, yes. And uh, I didn't uh, leave home or uh, separate from her. I still kept her right there in the home with me. Uh -huh. She still was my responsibility. And then, uh, oh, the years to come, I, Twin boys came in our family, and uh, there was she and the, and the boys I had to care for. And then later on, uh, my husband was called into service, and they left me just with her and the two boys. And that way, I, in that time, I got kind of, I got separated from him. Uh -huh. And from that on, why well, then I just had all the responsibilities by myself of my mother and these boys. Well, how did you manage? Well, it was odd. I, one thing, good thing, uh, at that time I was living in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, and I lived in the project there then. What project? Um, oh, what was the name of that? Uh, well, anyhow, it was government project, but Beach Terrace. Oh, yeah? Is it a housing It's project? a housing project just like over there. Uh-huh. And they call it Beach Terrace. And uh, so we had two bedrooms and the living room, the kitchen. And uh, my mother could get around. She uh, was partial paralyzed. Uh -huh. uh, one side was entirely paralyzed. And, but she could use the other, and she could get around. So I'd just leave seeing the boys there at home and go on my job. And Did you have Social Security on your job? No. You didn't? No, not at that time. I was just, uh, well, I, I think the WPA work was out then, and, and uh, we made two and a quarter a day. Oh. That was our pay. I remember working for two and a quarter. Well, what did it cost to stay in the housing project? It cost me thir uh, $15 a month. Oh, my. I had my lights and uh, my heat furnished, and of course the kitchen utilities and all. Uh -huh. That was furnished. Uh -huh. And so, uh, but $15 seemed like it was pretty, uh, well, I lived off a pretty good in a way, yeah. off that $15. And then people, were nice to me. They knew my uh, situation, and they, a lot of people would give me and bring things into me. And so that way, it just made it. Uh, I got along pretty nicely. 
And then, of course, the little boys, they, as I say, they, my mother looked after them. And then when they, when they were about four years old, I moved up here. Oh. This is my original home. I was born here, but uh, I, uh, well, someone advised me it'd be better to be up here where my relatives were, and they could help me more, maybe. Uh -huh. And so we moved up here. And they was four years old. Oh, yes. And I moved uh, in a little old cottage down here on 7th and Adam. And in that time, before that, I was up here visiting, and one of the ladies here uh, talked to me about coming back. And then she asked me, would I like to come back and work in the fraternity house with her? And I said, yes. I talked to my mother about it, and uh -huh. she had once worked around there. And so she said, oh, you can do it. So I said I would. Uh -huh. I told her that I would. And I came up here uh, overnight. She, and the next day we went to the house mother, and I was interviewed, and she hired me. So then I went back to Kentucky, packed up my little trunk, and, my family and come back up here in time to go back to work go uh, on my job that following Monday. And uh, so I went out to uh, uh, um, Tridelt House. I went to the Tridelt oh, House. Yes, I know where that is. Uh -huh, well, I was the second cook there with Avis Hines. Oh. And I stayed there three years. Mm -hmm. Then I went to uh, Africa Omega. Oh, yes. And I stayed them by three years. Uh -huh. Then from that on, I cooked out in private family and, and done housework like that and took care of myself and my family. And, and meanwhile, this little place here was advertised in the paper for $1,000. Uh -huh. I came out here to see about it. And I, uh, the man, I got to talk to him about it, and and uh, then I went to my boss at that time and uh, told him I'd find a house I'd like to buy. And my work wasn't full-time work, and I told him I wanted a job. And he said, what kind of job? I said, well, beggars won't be choosers, whatever you give me. And he had a home laundry. You heard the home laundry? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, he had that. He was the manager of that. And uh, I was just cleaning there. Mm -hmm. And I asked him to give me a job. So he said, what kind of job? I said, beggars can't be choosers, but just give me a full-time job. So he did give me a full-time job, keeping that laundry clean. Uh -huh. And then uh, well, I figured I could buy this house. You know, yeah. with the, and so I made arrangements. And, with a man that was interested in real estate to buy this house on contract. How and long have you lived here then? 22 years. 22 over years. 22 years oh, now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Over 22 years. So I come out here and I was a little disappointed shortly after I got here because uh, I think it was August and my mother passed in October. Because oh. oh. I pictured her having a nice place, you know, uh -huh. in the yard and all to the end, but uh, she, uh, she passed. So then that, that, that left just myself and little boys. They were n nine by that time, uh -huh. nine years old. And uh, I'd get them ready in the morning and get them up and uh, do what I had to do for them and tell them go on to school one time them to go, and they'd go. Uh -huh. So they went to Fairview for a while, mm -hmm. and then later on they transferred them out here to Hendersonburg, mm -hmm. and they went to Hendersonburg. Mm -hmm. Both went to school until uh, both uh, graduated from high school. Very good. And then, of course, the one dropped out, and the other, and he went on for a while. And so you're living here. Any problems, uh, you know, taking care of a house by yourself? Well, keeping my yard kind of 
straightened up. I, I'm not much of a uh, grace cutter. I don't know how to take care of grace or run a lot of more too well. And so that was kind of difficult for me. And grace get pretty high sometimes. And that 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 was quite a bit of trouble for me. And then I had I didn't have water in the house. Mm -hmm. And I had I've got a pump out there. And I'd have to pump my water and carry it in. Oh. That was a little hard on me oh. to keep that water pumped because it at times it got low mm -hmm. had to be primed and all that. Mm -hmm. and but I made it through it now. Here you're living right across from the housing development. Have you ever thought about moving over? Well, now with the 22 years experience here, I've, I've come to love this little place. You feel at home here? I feel at home. I appreciate it. A lot of times I've gone out and looked around in the yard, and, and I know there's something about it. I just appreciate it. Uh -huh. And... Uh, can you say how you feel about it? Well, it feels, oh, I feel secure, like, you know, uh -huh. this is my home. And uh, I can do what I want to, or fix it like I want to. And it's just good to have a place to, because uh, I, 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 my mind kind of goes back to when I first come here. I didn't have no home. Uh -huh. And I wasn't received, too. When you have children, and uh, oftentimes I've seen in the paper where they have signs uh, uh, where they want to rent the place, no children. Mm -hmm. So I just, I felt that made me feel more secure to think that I had this little place and my children had a place to stay and, and uh, complaint couldn't come in against me, you know, well, you've got children, you've got to go. That, that made me more contented. Mm -hmm. Then, for some call, when I come in, I was off of work. I just felt so good coming here. And it was yours. Uh-huh. I'd just come in here, and if I wasn't too tired, I'd jump in and do a little cleaning or whatever I had to do. And I had to make some changes when I first come here. It, it was just three rooms like, and later on, I, by the help of friends, I got a petition put in, the, in the, that made me uh, the four rooms, uh -huh. and uh, I had to burn wood or coal, uh -huh. so I had an old coal stove, and an old Florence, the heat by, and I had the ashes to, you know, yep, keep out, take out, and and the wood to bring in, uh, yep, bring it in. Cause little boys sometimes they'd get off and get to playing. And I'd need that wood pretty bad, <laughs> and I'd have to go out there and get it myself. And then, meanwhile, I don't know what got the idea in my head, but I decided to uh, build a little extra house. Oh. And my neighbors at that time helped me. Then the church helped me some, too. They started out. The church did the foundation, and then my neighbors, they pitched in and helped me. And I built a little three-room house. And uh, so I decided to live in the three-room house and rent the over here, and I'd have a little income. Oh, uh -huh, I see. The house next door, then, is the house that... The, it's, t it's burnt down, then. It's oh, torn down. I see. Uh -huh. But uh, it was three-room, little three-room cottage. It, um, over there on that space over there. And I mean, I lived over there and, and uh, for a while. And meanwhile, the boys got, they were getting older and they wanted a bedroom of their own. So I came over here uh -huh. when the family moved out. Uh -huh. I moved over here and rented that out over there. Uh -huh. And that was, you know, quite a help to me. Yes. Uh, my income and but what are you doing now that it's burnt down that that's a well, source of income that's gone to you well uh in the course of time i contracted uh enlarged heart oh. while i was cooking and all and they uh retired i got retirement really sooner than the, I, I froze my social security they oh. said 
you know, got it uh -huh. before I was the age to get it because I had this enlarged heart and I didn't have any income and no, you know, one to take care of me. And so I froze my Social Security and accepted it then. And that was my source of income, my Social Security. And while I could, before the place got burned down, why uh, that income? And I, and when my house burned, and I, ha I had a little insurance on it, and that finished up my payment oh, on yes. my house. Uh -huh. And oh, did I feel good. Free and clear. Yes, sir. And uh, so then I, uh, um, I didn't do too much. Well, I couldn't work, and so I didn't do too much trying to. I just kind of went in my shell, I guess, in a way. What do you mean, went in your shell? I just felt like I didn't have nothing, and I couldn't. I just had to do the best I could, and I got to a place that I, oh, I didn't want to be around nobody else. I just wanted to sit here and mope to myself. Well, it, it, uh, doesn't seem like well you. I got to that place that, that time you know the time that you felt that I felt that way you felt that you wanted to be here by yourself you said by myself and why do you suppose you felt that way well I, for one thing I was so used to looking after myself doing for myself and whatever I wanted to done and after getting in that condition from the enlarged heart it just kind of done something to me mm -hmm. made me a more melancholy, like, you know, yeah. sorry for myself. Yeah. More sorry for myself. That was the whole thing. Well, um, you don't seem like that now. What no. happened? No. Well, that's what happened. Uh, this this way it come about. Meanwhile, during that time, sitting around here, nothing to do, nowhere to go. I'm a little backward, a little, you know, felt a little like I didn't know how to maybe cope with people like all too. So... Oh, uh, I met a woman. I'd been she and I'd been friends, and she had surgery, and I went and stayed with her fam with her family, and, and uh, took care of it. There was two children, and then uh, got that much more acquainted with her, and, and then she. Uh, moved, and she still wanted me to come and stay with her, and I still went around her. And she got work first with the community action. Oh. Uh -huh. And she was going around. They were going to have a meeting to put an office in of some kind. I forget. I can't recall just what it was, but they were going to put an officer in, in uh, on the community action work. And this woman, her name was Mary McConnell, she come, she was going around getting people to come to this meeting. And she come stop by and, and asked me about why not come to this meeting. And, and they had put in this uh, candidate they want. Mm -hmm. And I said, I would. Mm -hmm. She said she'd come at me. And I, we, had the, we had the meeting in the laundromat down here on the fifth and Adam. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget, it seemed like that very night, being down there and talking with the other women and they were explaining their complaints and talking about them and we were just kinda of exchanging, you know, with one another and and well, they've done something to me. I thought, well I, I'm not so bad off after all. And I believe I'll go to this meeting uh -huh. all along. And so, we put the fella in. Uh -huh. But by going back to the meeting, you met then, and this was the first time Seemed like for a long time, time that you really gotten out of the house. Seemed like, well, yes. And, you know, and met with Yeah, people. met with people. See, yeah. I've just been sitting up here on this hill and the night any yard and yeah. watching the people pass. And nobody was nobody. Coming. No, nobody came in. Uh -huh. mm -mm. You were just kind of left alone. Mm -hmm. Just left alone. And the little boys were just having their time running around, you know, with their friends and everything. That left me still at much more home. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, by myself, I mean. So 
That means I sit out there in that yard a many times mm -hmm. by myself. And uh, so that night, just sitting there talking with those ladies and all, it sort of done something to me. Uh -huh. And I thought, well, I believe I'll come to this meeting. And I did. At they, 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 that time, the meeting was being held at Reverend Butler's church. And that next meeting night, I went to the meeting, uh, day rather it was. And I enjoyed myself and much more. Something happened to me, I don't know. I how, just enjoyed it. How do you feel now? Well, now I, I still don't feel much better. Yeah, that's physically. You don't feel much better, or uh, I feel much better uh, in my uh, living. You feel uh, better in your living. Yeah. How so? I feel I can just make it. How I come? can just do things. What's the difference? Well, just. For one thing, when I started out with that group, those women, and we got to going around, and we'd go to uh, one another's homes and have uh, little get-togethers and all. I, and it looked like, well, now they're getting along. Different, the different women, they seemed like they were, some were sick, like me, and some were without anybody, like I am, or like I was. And so, and they were getting along, and it seemed like they put something in me mm -hmm. that I could do that. And then I began to, and that I'll tell you, I'm not flinetty, but I am a Christian. Uh -huh. And I prayed in my little way, you know. Uh -huh. And then in my praying, I'd ask the Lord to help me to do these things. In my prayers, uh -huh. I'd say, yes. help me, Lord, to just uh, do what I need to do to take care of myself. Well, now, if you had the opportunity, what would you say to... Uh, just a person. How could a person help you? Well, their friendship. Yes. If they were friendly, they would come to see me, and then I, and meanwhile, they'd invite me to their home. Uh -huh. Well, when those times I was sitting here, nothing to do, nowhere to go, that person would probably come to my mind. Well, I believe I go see. Uh, walk over to whoever's house it was that uh -huh. come to me, come in my mind. Uh -huh. And I walk over there and she'd make me welcome. We sit and have a little talk and exchange and, and just seemed like the people, oh, I don't know, there was something about the people toward me. Made me feel like after all I wasn't just as lone as I thought I was. I wasn't as lone as I thought. I liked their attitude. And it make me want to go back. Uh -huh. And then they'd come to see me. Why it, it brought me out a lot, too. That helped me a lot. Tell me, if there's one thing you would want to leave in our minds, what would that be? About uh, now you, I, I hear you saying that you have you, your friends. You feel that people are concerned about you. People will stop in, although you'd like more. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say that would... Um, uh, stick in our minds uh, something that would make you feel even better. Well, the main thing I, I feel like is good friendship. That's the way I, I feel. That, a good friendship, a real friendship with people. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a lot of them or not, you know, whether you have a... I've come to that conclusion. Whether sometimes I've thought about well, I don't hardly see anybody here lately, those things that uh, I don't hardly see anybody like I used to. But yet, there are those that I see that I appreciate. They come in, or I see them on the street, and we talk, we chat, and I see them at different places and meetings, and they, it makes me feel like, well, good friendship is the best thing you can have. Don't be sulky. And, you know, not uh, just to yourself that way. Don't do that. That's not a good thing to do. Thank you very, very much, Mrs. Burton. We appreciate your meeting with us. No, I Thank you. Being with you, and I hope I've given you an idea. Yes, it's been. And, and, uh,
I began to get this ready. And then I put out my current expenses, like my jewel and, and the personal debt, debt like a loan, loan, bank loan, and my gas and my lights and phone. Like that, I, I itemize them, put them down. And on each side, on the other side, I put how much I'm going to pay them. And uh, now my fuel oil, I'm on a budget, and I have to pay $20 a month. So that goes down all each month. I've got that Farm Bureau. Mm -hmm. I'll start out with that. Then I go on down with the rest of my things, and the next uh, highest, I mean the next, my farm bureau is about the highest, and then the next on down. Now your house, you just have your taxes on the house, right? I'm exempted right now. And you're exempted. Uh -huh. I don't have to worry about yeah. that now. I've got yeah. that exempt. I go up and see about my exemption, and so I have that. And then uh, my gas, I have to use bottle gas, and I have to uh, pay so much a bottle for that. Uh -huh. And I managed to use a bottle anyhow a month all over. But the way I do it, I uh, have a bottle in reserve. I put in two bottles. Uh -huh. Pay for one bottle right then, and then let the other uh, lay in reserve to, to be paid. And then the rest of my bill, my doctor, uh, well, for a while I were. Uh, I put how much I was going to pay him, ever what I felt that I could pay him. And then my uh, food, I just sort of make a guess how much I was going to buy with the food. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I do that. Do you have enough for food, really? Yeah, because uh, I'm on a diet, a uh -huh. $12,000 uh, 12, calorie diet. In that way, I follow that diet. And it takes care of me. I, I get enough to eat, and then it takes care of me physically. See, I, I don't have to suffer. Uh -huh. So I think I feel like it's better to go ahead and get those things what I should have and and uh, eat and that that you go. Were, you were telling me that uh, you don't use food stamps. Now the past two, the past this month and next month, no. I didn't get food stamps. Then I'll tell you something else that happens. It happens to me. It's, it's say it's a little personally, but people are nice to me about giving me. And sometimes, just out of clear sky, somebody brings me a piece of beef. Uh -huh. And then uh, sometimes they have all different little pat pat uh, hamburger patties and things like that. Now I don't. I plan not to just eat that right then and there when I get it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I put it in my little freezer compartment, uh -huh. and then in planting my food, I plan my food like a meat and vegetable uh -huh. and bread that I should have, and I don't fix any more than that. Uh -huh. And I get a couple of uh, servings or so out of uh, meals out of what I have, and that way. But as a rule, people give me. Nice. People have come in and give me, and, and my neighbors are fishers, uh -huh. and they bring me fish. Uh -huh. They know that I like fish, and they bring it to me, uh -huh. and I dress it and put that in my freezer. Yes. So that's where I manage in my food, and that's where I can kind of manage better that way. So you're saying you really manage fine on your... Yeah, I, I manage, yeah, uh -huh. I, uh -huh. I do, uh, because... You know the need of just getting just because you can get it to eat. It's better to, if it's better for you, your health is better to just manage that way, and that's where I manage. And that's where I get along. And then, of course, my foam and, and my light and gas, you, you can't hardly tell much about that. Do you have an item there for transportation? Well, uh, as a whole, I have recently been depending on Monroe C Council for the Old Americans cab uh, transportation uh -huh. and uh, for going to the doctor. See, and uh, so I go 
about once every month to the doctor. But my other transportation, since we have these buses on, and I managed to get out there and catch one of them. And it's 15 cents for senior citizens. So that's my transportation. And I don't go any place hardly other than uh, up to town and things like that for my, you know, necessary uh, going, fine. and then the rest of it, why I go for our senior citizen places, why they usually furnish our transportation. Oh, okay. So that's where I, that's fine. where I manage for my transportation. And my doctor, uh -huh. here lately, I have been uh, put on the Medicaid. Oh yes, okay. and that's taken that's care of. Fine. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bird.